Assemblywoman Marianne Bottenshawn in studio. Good morning. Good morning. So it was an interesting session here, right? Very interesting in the sense uh, many of my colleagues said they haven't seen something uh, move as quickly as, uh, and the word interesting yeah. in a very, very long time. Is that good or is that, uh, is that bad? I guess it is, uh, you put it in perspective in regards to uh, individuals that have been looking for these bills to be passed. Some of yeah. them have been six or seven years. Um, some of them have been a decade. Um, some, some of them have been, <laughs> have been a decade for a reason. Yes. Um, and now all of a sudden there is no, it used to be the Republican Senate was always there to block a lot of these things from happening. And uh, is there anything that you can think of that shouldn't have passed that did? Well, I was very concerned um, with our Farm Act uh, yeah. because uh, clearly I, I am for safety mm-hmm. for anyone that's working, including all of you, as well as being treated fair. Um, however, the process of collective bargaining starts with a clear conversation between an employee and employer or employees, yeah. plural. Yeah. So um, from the research that I uh, are office looked into there was not enough of that there was not enough dialogue between those that are owning the farms and those that are working for those individuals so it was more um that's what i had requested i had asked um to slow it down so that those conversations could happen and um obviously the sponsor again had had been spending close to a decade working on this and felt that uh, it was where's the sponsor from uh who is queens queens Uh, so yes she is perfect uh, so they completely <laughs> understand. Uh, they understand the farming, uh, the farming industry here. Um, is in her mind? Is it a she? By yes. the way? Yeah. In her mind, is she thinking that these are massive farms with massive amount of uh, uh, workers, sometimes migrant workers? Is that what is her vision of what goes on? The dialogue that I had with her was more concerned about ensuring that anyone can uh, unionize. Which makes sense, yeah. but again, it just got to the point where it wasn't including those employees as part of the conversation, yeah. and that's that's what I uh, couldn't emphasize enough with her, and I struggled with to try to remind her that um, having much many more hearings and having them throughout the state to have these individuals talk before the collective bargaining process. I just. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't say enough and emphasize enough the importance of that dialogue to occur. Um, there was some compromise. It was initially 40 hours. Uh, they moved it to 60 hours. Uh, then um, they also uh, moved it to just one day of rest. But I, I kept explaining to her the importance of uh, if it's raining, as we have seen, right, I and mean, it's devastating. Right. There. The farmers are in this area. Had so three this days. Re- this restriction says what that uh, that farm uh, owners have to do what for employees? It's sixty hours, and then after that, it would go to time and a half. And um, clearly, uh, they need a day of rest, which uh, again um, per week. Per week, yeah. Okay. So, and, and again, not unfair, but many of the individuals, as you had talked earlier, uh, that come to this area through the process legally that are working with many of the farms in our area. Mm-hmm. Um, they're here to work because right. they want to, they're, yeah. they're yeah. making their money as, as much as they can, as quick as they can, because obviously there's seasons that they're not going to be able to right. work. Right. There's seasons that they won't be, yeah. uh, they won't be able to work. Mm-hmm. Winter time is coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when we get these crazy springs with the, with the heavy rains, um, it, it really poses a problem for farmers. So mm-hmm. they have to, and you know, it, it, I hate to say, but, the 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 guy I'm thinking of somebody right now in my mind, some a friend of mine that uh, grew up on a farm. Uh, it was a family farm. Sure, they hired people, but it wasn't that big of a farm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he worked every day. Um, I guess that's his choice because his family owns the farm. Right. But um, but that's what farmers do. Uh, they they work every day. The rest of us are like, well, we're all going out. He couldn't go out because. He had to he had to take care of the farm. That the cows still have to be milked every day. Yes, all of that. So, uh, but so, so now they'll be forced to pay time and a half. Mm-hmm. Wow, this is uh, or um, do what a lot of these uh, uh, big chains have done to avoid the fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage. They just cut people's hours so they don't reach the threshold. 
And I mean, I obviously I live in Marcy, and the Dunedin yeah. Farm it mm-hmm. provides a lot of insight because there's there's housing that's provided. I mean, there's there's so many other aspects to this. Yeah. Um, so it is. I'd have to say that that was uh, something that was very um, concerning to me yeah, initially, yeah. and um, I find the most important way to resolve is not just simple, I voted no. Mm-hmm. It's simple, uh, the most important is to have those dialogues and conversations over the months I was there. But it didn't to, work in this case. Well, it, it changed a little. I mean, yeah, it was 40 yeah. hours, it go, went to 60, but... Um, I think the the most important thing that I always remind myself is that these individuals have been spending years and years, and uh, for me to come in and, and have the pushback um, to think that it's going to be totally stopped, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not um, You're realistic. You're not going to pull it off. Uh, and the green light legislation, your thoughts on that, and uh, and how did you handle that? Uh, that? I did vote no. It's an unfunded mandate is how I see it. Mm-hmm. Again, um, there was some changes that had been made. The changes were a step forward, um, but weren't to the point that it would work for Anita County and Herkimer County. So um, I had, had dialogue with the uh, uh, sheriff that, as I had stated before, provides a lot of insight from a law enforcement perspective as yeah. well as our county clerk, um, just to hear how we're going to be able to put this forward. We have uh, this, uh, this, and then the environmental uh, bill as well. That's another one that, um, you know, while this is all amazingly awesome that we're going to have a clean society, um, how do we stay financially solvent through all this? Um, some of these, these are like the, the strictest rules in the, in the nation right now. And it, that is a 22-person a panel. So it's uh, this was probably debated close to five hours. Yeah. So it was a real important discussion mm-hmm. that we had. Um, so it's it's a panel that is bringing so many individuals together with so many different expertises to put forward these goals, these expectations. Um, the expectations are very high. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. But at the same token, when we're looking at bringing in so many individuals, I look at uh, my education background in, in working in the college and that's how we resolve stuff is to tr- bring experts to a table now bringing 22 people to one table it's going to take a while yeah um are those goals achievable achievable i hope so but i'm yeah. not sure um, uh, do you fear though that bringing all the people to the table while that is the way it's uh, it's done and everybody votes it is the the uh, it, it, we're we've leaned so far to the left that it it, it we're fearing uh, we're nearing a point where it the the legislature doesn't represent upstate. It only represents the the uh, way of life uh, of, uh, of liberal Democrats uh, from New York City. Well, this um, group that's coming together is not just um, left, right, center. What right. it is, I mean, they are. There, yeah. there are just so many different uh, commissioners. We're looking at the DEC. We're looking at AG. We're looking at. But I'm saying general, in general, in general everything that's passed. Uh, it's been a, a a pretty big liberal agenda for the governor this uh, this session. It, it, it a lot of struggle. I yeah. had absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. think um, one uh, bill that I did put forward is expanding safe storage because there was a problem with it. Uh, yeah. The problem was that um, it said that uh, someone under the age of 16 could not be in possession or near that of a shotgun or rifle. Well, obviously, in the state of New York, we provide junior hunting licenses at 12, Mm -hmm. and we have 4-H programs. So we have so many programs where – so the bill needed to be amended. So that was something that I I, I felt very passionate about and because it does represent our area. How was it amended? uh, What what was the final final bill? That it expands that uh, a child under the consent of their parent, if they're in – a hunting club or uh, working with 4-H has the ability, obviously, to have Got the, that okay. gun. They're working with someone that is is clearly trained and understands that uh, has has the ability to perform that yeah. instruction through NRA uh, approval. All right. Uh, anything else that you want to hit on? That uh, I that... just uh, my first bill was the the Crosley bill to mm-hmm. ensure that we change uh, the highway. Uh, Mariskini Boulevard. That family is a wonderful family. Yeah, yeah. Um, an officer that uh, we all uh, are near and dear to us. Yeah, so yeah. we'll be having that this summer. Uh, it's, it's it's just it took some time. So yeah. those are the things that kind of frustrate a little is, is how much time it takes. Assemblywoman Marianne Buttonshaw, thanks so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. And happy summer. Yes, we're here. <laughs> yeah, you're back. <laughs>